Rachel Ray is here. Welcome, Emmy Award winning talk show host, Rachel Ray. Woo! <laughs> Well, hello, Rachel. Well, hello. <laughs> How are you today, darling? I'm good. It's uh, low humidity. I like that. I right. Like that. It's good. Frizz control. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, so, oh, wow. I didn't know that was reading up there. That's awesome. Okay, cool. You don't um, have to read. I, <laughs> no, I answer anything. That's awesome. <laughs> well, we have a couple things going on for you, like... In the next couple days, couple weeks, Rachel Ray promises. Your show. Promises. Tell me about your show. Your twelfth season coming up. Yeah, twelve is a big thing for me. I got married twelve years ago. I adapted my pitbull twelve years ago. We launched the magazine twelve years ago, and uh, the daytime talk show. So, uh, knock on wood, they're all still here. Going, going right. well. Twelve. I 12 remain stuff. gainfully employed, and the dog is good. She's uh, home with John. It's Monday, so he's probably having a, a lovely afternoon scotch. He usually <laughs> takes Monday off, so. 12. Okay, what's your dog's name? I do not. Isabu. Isabu. Oh, Isabella my gosh. Isabella is my favorite name, and I don't have time to have human children. <laughs> and my first pit bull was named Boo. And when she passed, I got Isabu because she had a bindi dot right in the middle of her forehead, oh. and she looked very similar to her. Mm -hmm. So I combined the two names and named her Isabu. Isabu. Go, Isabu. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Um, what was something that really influenced the trend of your show, Rachel Ray? Well, I think our show didn't set out to be um, like anything else of its kind. Our show, we love having celebrities on, but when they come on, we like them to do a longer format and let people get to know them as if they were, you know, their next door neighbors right. rather than celebrities. So they can bring a clip of whatever and plug whatever, but we try and have a little more next door neighbor kind of time with them. And our show is not celebrity dependent. so. We try and make sure that people see as much of themselves mm -hmm. on our show as they do celebrities or politicians or athletes or, you know, people that they see as celebrities right. or famous. And I think that's a fun promise, you know, because you never get the same show twice. At the very least, hopefully we make you hungry and want to make <laughs> dinner. Look, the concept of the show, the concept of, of our business model as a brand is that good life should not be for rich or privileged people. Life should be adventurous and feel good and feel fun, not just on weekends or when you retire. But, you know, whether it's talking to strangers, taking a left instead of a right, taking mm -hmm. small vacations instead of saving up for one big one, making something different for dinner. We want people to have fun, you know, every day they're alive. So right. th the show has very small goals, but we want to reach those goals every day. We just mm -hmm. want people to have fun and learn something. Yes. Something huge? No. <laughs> maybe a recipe, maybe a tip, maybe a trick. Maybe they learn something about a celebrity when we do have them on that they wouldn't see someplace else. We like it to be a friendly space where everybody feels that they can conquer what they see. Yeah. So another thing that's very important to me is a, um, a producer, or a writer, or a, a presenter. I want people to feel that they have access to everything that they see. So mm -hmm. we let people see messes and successes. We are not scripted, which is wildly evident if That's you watch. Amazing. <laughs> so, you know, we want people to feel comfortable and not intimidated to try anything they see. And we want them to be a little bit inspired to just have a little bit more fun. Yeah. Now, with you having celebrities on your show, is there a celebrity that you've ever been starstruck by where you're just like, oh? My first crush when I was a little girl, <laughs> and the only thing I would put a dress on for was the Tom Jones show. Oh. So the first time Tom Jones came on the show, I had a very difficult time looking at him. Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. I would have been like, <gasps> but I mean, really, you know, huge moments. I mean, yeah. I never thought I'd, I'd have uh, any sort of life in television or hang out with celebrities. So, I mean, some of my favorites are the most optimistic person on the planet to me is Michael J. Fox. Yeah. And, you know, the first time he was ever on the show overwhelmed me. And he slow danced with me to that song, right, from mm -hmm. the show when he yeah. fell in love with Tracy. He's oh. the life wife. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's amazing. It. That, that was great. The first day we launched our children's initiative, I can't even believe you know, that was 10 years ago, but mm -hmm. President Clinton was there and he partnered the Alliance for Healthier Generation with our little upstart. Um, there's a lot of important days on my show. That's uh, good. You know, I think every day... As I said, what's most important to me is that every day we shoot three shows on most days, um, taping our show. 
what's important to me is that I'm always surprised by how many shows don't have a celebrity yeah. or, you know, a star athlete or, you know, a politician in them that where you're like, wow, the audience really loved that. Mm -hmm. And it's just people watching each other and sharing ideas with each other. Those are some of my favorites from, from that arena of my life. And now with the clip we just watched, it seems like you have so much fun on set. What is the funniest thing that's ever happened to you on set? <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's, it, it depends, you know what I mean? It's all funny, you know, and Regis sets himself on fire. <laughs> you know, it's funny. When, when I cut myself on air, it's usually pretty funny for oh, no. people. I mean, we're just, I, I just like that people see that, that, that. We don't clean things up or, what I'm upset about is how much we over edit. Like we take out, you know, when Dennis Leary and I are sitting together, there's a lot of heavy editing that goes down, but it's, it's more because of our language with each other than the content. But, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I think we always have, hopefully, a good time. Every day should be fun for everybody. That's so good. Um, now, with your first, I remember watching Rachel Ray a while back, and it was cooking, 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 and so much cooking. And all well, I was on 30 minutes. I've been on Food Network for 20 years, mm -hmm. 19 years. So That's amazing. Yeah, of course. Now, was the transition tough to come from cooking shows to no, doing interviews? No, wasn't interview? my idea at all. My, oh. my friend, uh, Brooke Johnson, who ran uh, Food Network at the time, she said, you know, you should do a talk show. I said, well, I'm under contract with you guys. I, I, it's not, you know. <laughs> like you you got to figure it out. No. <laughs> Um, so we've always been partners with Scripps um, and uh, CBS, of course, okay. and our little company. And then Oprah became a part of the process and invited me on her show. And okay. I mean, once you're on Oprah, if you're, <laughs> you're, 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 there, you're in, you're in yeah. there. <laughs> um, it, you know, so it, it was just a weird set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. It wasn't part of the plan. It just sort of organically happened. Now, you have another show coming up or that's premiered, Worst Cooks in America. Oh, that's work that I do for uh, Food Network, and I do that project especially for my friend Ann Burrell. Uh -huh. I love Ann, so I'm kind of a sucker for any friend who says, please come do this. That is a very hard show to do. <laughs> yeah, it's been on uh, all summer, I think. Mm -hmm. it I mean, it's probably coming towards the end of its cycle, but Worst Cooks really is one of the worst jobs to have because the days are so long, and you really torture these people, and they really do... <laughs> What suck in the kitchen. Mean? So like it's uh -huh. it's hard. It's like watching children play in traffic. You know? Oh no! Like, oh. Here's people who don't know how to turn on stoves, and they're playing with knives and fire, and you know. And the the model for that is people bring in their dishes, and do you try the dishes? Do you taste the? Dishes? Oh, we're supposed to, but oh. since I work very little for Food Network, I feel perfectly free to say I'm not eating no, that. This is and not it is okay. Anne's show. <laughs> Anne's kind of the same. Anne's like, yeah, I'm not going there. The worst of the worst yeah. that we ever had was a very sweet man, older man trying to learn a new trick, that's great. He cooked for us and he put together a jar of mayonnaise, uh, three or four cans of tuna and a jar of raspberry preserves and then baked it with American cheese slices on top. No, no. In a loaf pan. <laughs> no. There's no. no freaking way I'm eating Does that. It? I mean, <laughs> of course not. Does anyone actually try them, though? The oh, Anne and I try a lot. We've we've had a lot of really horrible, awful stuff. But, no. the, you know, everybody's heart is in the right place. And the reason I do the show is that it's very important to Anne to really teach people and get them excited about it. And the reason I do it is not only because of Anne, but because I think it changes the quality of your life to be able to provide food for yourself and people that you care about, yeah. whether you're a rocket scientist or you cook for a living, it changes the day-to-day -day quality of your life. Yeah, that's very true. And even what you said about cooking for people you love, you have a pet food line. I started that because uh, several years ago, a lot of American um, animals, dogs and cats, were literally being poisoned by their loved ones unknowingly and unwittingly yeah. because there were so many um, fillers in the foods that were being imported and there was no regulation of it. Mm -hmm. We've always had, since day one of the magazine, um, a, a pet food column okay. if you want to cook something for your animal. But to be honest, it's hard for people to find time to cook for themselves. It's not realistic. People are going to cook for their pets every right. single day. So we started um, a line with an American company. At the time, it was called Dad's. Um, Ainsworth is, is the name of the company. And they were lovely people, and they agreed to make this food to recipes based on what I would write for the, for the magazine okay. and to the highest of standards. I've eaten the kibble, you know, and the cat food 
wet cat food. It needs a little oh. salt, but it's tasty. And I eat it on television all the time to prove to people that it's delicious. It's edible, and, and I can of course, it. And it's tasty. But because that brand's been very successful, we've raised and given away, I, I think we may be over 17 million now, because we were at 16 million. Okay. And then we gave 1 million uh, to Harvey, right. to the animal victims of, of that uh, Harvey, tragedy. Yeah. So I think now we're over 17 million, but it's because the brand is successful and it's doing well for animals that have special outer allergies, elderly mm -hmm. dogs. We, we, we've really had great luck um, with that brand and it, it serves its purpose. One of the most important lessons I think I learned over the last you know, 19 years of my life and building this brand and building the business is you can make business models to fund anything you want. It shouldn't yeah. just be about what you can collect and get. If you become successful in business, you can make a model, large or small, mm -hmm. to fund whatever you want. Yeah. You know? So we send kids to school, we improve school food, we feed hungry American children. That was our first initiative, Yummo. We use that as the model for Nutrish. That's how we fund animals, animal rescue. And we don't just save dogs and cats, we save horses and llamas and goats and oh. all kinds <laughs> of non-kill uh, facilities, large and small. Oh, that's so amazing. What um, Entering the pet food market, what was probably the most surprising thing to learn about the actual pet food market? Uh, uh, nothing, really. I mean, okay. well, once you give people a fair price and a great product, mm -hmm. uh, it's a... You know, I, I never look at business like that. I try and think of what I want in a product or a thing. Mm -hmm. I design furniture. I design pots. I, I certainly produce and, and program television. I write recipes religiously, tons of them every single day. And I try and figure out how to serve my customer mm -hmm. and what's not being done yet. I never think about what do I have to learn about this genre or that genre. I try and come up with, as a consumer or a customer myself, what do I think's missing out there? And that's my headspace. Yeah. I don't study what the other guy's doing. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. I wish them all the success in the mm -hmm. world. I want to come up with something that feels comfortable for, for me you. and the people I work with and our style and our way. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, we move along and come yeah. up with a new solution. And if it does work, great. We try and nurture that thing and let it grow. Mm -hmm. We are not a group of people that goes to work thinking about the next guy or the, the competition. We go to work to problem solve and to work for each other, yeah. to give each other something that's a solution for a small problem. Wow. Now, have you ever cooked for your pets? Like, do you make dinner Always. for your pets often? Oh, how Always. often? Always, like every day. I mean, Izzy wow. also likes her dry food, um, and there's always some kibble in the bowl, but Izzy's a very weird dog. She only eats when she's truly, truly hungry. Like, mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times my husband comes home from, uh, he does these dinners with his friends eh, once every month or every other month. Um, steak and men night, mostly <laughs> scotch and men night, but Ooh. they, they eat a little bit of steak and he brings home like Peter Luger or something. She will walk away from it. Like if oh. she's not hungry, she doesn't she just, want any part of it. It's a good talk. Very, 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 very picky dog, very oh. picky eater. <laughs> but yeah, I cook for all the time. I love to cook. That's amazing. I like, when I think about pet food, I'm like, oh my gosh, if I, if I don't eat it, then why should my pet eat it? And that's a little. Well, that's what the your point behind is. our food, exactly. Yeah. If I wouldn't feed it to people, why would I give it to someone? Exactly. To something that's as important in my life as humans. Exactly. Now, with the whole Google food module, as you know, Google is a tech company. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, um, but you are also got a lot of food in this. Exactly. In this one building, y'all have like eight restaurants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, what do you think the next food trend is with technology and food merging together? You know, I think that food... As in everything, because of Google, access to information, because of the way people are so connected now and anyone can go up on YouTube and mm -hmm. share uh, stop motion quick videos and how they made this or that and people are educating themselves in what they eat and why they eat it and how they eat it. Um, I think that, you know, it opens up lots of doors and possibilities for everyone, for people just starting out in the business, for people that want to continue to educate themselves or build their customer base. I think it's it, it's it's great. I mean, people ask me all the time, what do you think about the meal kits and the meal deliveries? Mm -hmm. Listen, anything gets you into the kitchen, sooner or later, I hope you'll learn how to do it for yourself because yeah. it, it, of course, costs you less money and you have the byproduct. You don't have to cook out of these little pouches and they send you three pea pods, <laughs> you know. But I think it's terrific if people need that as the thing that gets them started or down that line. 
Uh, I think it's I think it's great. Do you see yourself in the mobile applications market? We have so many markets. Only as much as I see the smart people around me trying to push me into. <laughs> okay. I mean, is it something that I'm naturally good at? No. Mm -hmm. Do we have a lot of really educated people around me that will bring our, us there? Sure, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Now, how do you find the balance between eating healthy and just like comfort food? I love comfort food. You love comfort balance food. Balance drives oh. me nuts. Right? I think that word is such bullshit. I just do. <laughs> I am not a person that likes to live balanced anything. Mm -hmm. I eat colorful food. Yes. I cook with largely olive oil. I've never felt guilt about food. I am not, uh, you know, I eat what I feel like eating. Uh, but actually, most people that cook for a living, or that, you know, work in the service industry, mm -hmm. what makes us happy is to make the person we're serving happy. So yeah. all we want to cook is whatever the person sitting with us wants to eat. Right. We're not picky at all. Like, you know, yeah. we'll literally eat anything. When I was a kid and Judy Bloom had the book of how to eat fried worms, <laughs> I was the kid that would eat the worm for a buck. What? Like, <laughs> I really, I can't eat anything. I'm happy with just scrambled eggs, mm -hmm. you know, but... It's not something I give really a thought to. And I never give a thought to balance about my life. Like I can cook all day and do three shows and get home at eight. We always make dinner. Yeah. I prefer to be at home. I prefer to go there, uh, you know, uh, put my Spam-a-Lot slippers and my Jet <laughs> slippers on, get in the kitchen, open some wine and make, make our dinner. And that's the way I was raised. My mother worked 8,200 hours a week. My grandfather uh, before her was my best friend when I was a kid. He worked 100 hours a week. He'd get his kids out of bed in the middle of the night so he could sing arias to them and they could watch the Northern Lights. <laughs> it's about your quality of life. It's not about balance. Yeah. That word kind of, it's like yeah. getting a hit with a shock or something. It shouldn't be about balance. If you love your job, you should love doing it yeah. a lot of the time. If you care about enjoying the time you're home, you should care enough to stay up a little later, pull out a pan, make some food for yourself because mm -hmm. it feeds your soul, not just your stomach. Like, it's more about the quality for me than yeah. the, the balance thing. Yeah. Now, with the quality, I know that your shopping list is probably insane <laughs> every week. <laughs> Sorry. This is such... People find this so freaky about me. Uh -huh. My friend Emily made me this um, wrapping paper of all of my grocery lists. She went in what? and photographed because <laughs> she thinks they're so nuts. Mm -hmm. And now whenever I give a gift to someone, I don't even have to put a card on it because they know Just it's, like, it's wrapped in my <laughs> wrapping. Yeah, I'm nutty, nutty list maker. I don't know if I believe in horoscopes or whatever, but I am a Virgo and that's supposed to be people who love to make lists. Virgos. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, I I'm, I'm, it up, I'm like, nuts. Yeah. yeah. So every year we take a group of our friends primarily musicians and cooks. We did, for 10 years, take 100 people every year to the scene of the crime where my husband and I got married in Italy. Mm -hmm. It's the only like ridiculous expenditure in my life. Otherwise, <laughs> I live in sweatpants and I'm down at the Target. But we would, every year for 10 years, take all of our friends and most of our family mm -hmm. to Italy with us and just party for the whole weekend, I'm right? I'm now your family. Yeah. <laughs> now, they that that castle, the guy who owns it, he moved mm -hmm. back in. So now it's a much smaller thing. Okay. And we have like 30, 35 of us go to Italy and they're all cooks or musicians. And I go there and I, I cook for two of the nights. Okay. And our friends jump in and make extra dishes to go on the table. But I basically just live in the kitchen, mm -hmm. right? So the list I just finished, this is coming up <laughs> next week. The list I just finished over this weekend, it is 16 handwritten pages of equipment, the groceries, <laughs> every single like checklist of everything possible. Mm -hmm. It's 16 pages. What? <laughs> I had to photograph <laughs> and send it to Italy. I call my friend Giancarlo at the place. I'm like, are you ready? Let's, let's go through the list. <laughs> and she's like, oh my God. Is yeah, like two and a half hours on the phone to go through it. Yeah, I'm a nutter. <laughs> like, and then I get there, and of course I change my mind when I get to the market, right. or I see this, or I see that. But I do that for my family every week. I cook for my mom. Uh, usually every other weekend we go up upstate. I'm from the Adirondacks. Mm -hmm. And I try and plan out every menu seasonally. I'll get up before work and go to Union Square Green Market. What I can't find, I'll order through the, the kitchens at the show, or my husband will go to Garden of Eden or something. But so that's the 16-page game plan. You like that, giving it up. Next week is 16 pages. <laughs> usually for the weekend it's only two to four. <laughs> what? So how, what is your game plan when you go in the grocery stores? Is it like produce well, last? I rarely go to 
grocery store, grocery okay. stores. I go to, I'm very lucky in that when I'm in the city, I go to Union Square Green Market for yeah. most of the season. And then I can also order stuff at the show mm -hmm. and tack it into the orders that are coming in. Right? Yeah. Um, and I love to shop in Chelsea Market. There's Lobster Place and Buon Italia I love. Um, so I kind of piecemeal it and I put together my game plan, but then... <laughs> When I get to the market, I also say, oh, yeah, we should do a whole roast cauliflower, too. Oh. <laughs> like, I have a thumbnail sketch. Okay. But when I get there, I mean, generally, I cook like every person who cooks for a mm -hmm. living. You, you cook seasonally, and what you know is going to be there and what's going to look good and have the best price. Um, but you always change it up a little bit or mystery box it when you get there. That's if I was teaching people how to shop, which I do often on our show... You go into the store, you should always take a look at the loss leaders. There's a loss leader in every department. Oh. Buy that, whatever it is. If, even if you don't want to eat it that week, put it in your freezer. Okay. Always shop low and high, never in the middle. Those are the best prices. Always buy per unit of measure, not the price that's ticketed on the item, so on and so forth. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you just saved so much of my life right now because I'm just like middle aisle. Whatever I can reach, I'm just like, okay, you go in the cart. Now. Yeah, you're wasting a lot of money. Apparently. And you gotta <laughs> learn how to break down a chicken. You gotta learn how to buy. My mom told me that last week. She's like, we're doing this. If you, you gotta learn gloves, it. Like, If right. you know how to break down a chicken, you know a lot. <gasps> and it you. saves you a lot of money. A lot of money. It a does. A lot of money. And you can freeze it and just That's have it right. for the next. I was like, ha, I mom. know. Thank you, Ray. Right. Have fun. It's so great. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, what influenced all of this? What inspired you to get into cooking and start yeah, teaching? I mean, you know, just luck of the draw. I mean, okay. my mother is one of 10 children. My grandfather was one of 16, 14 lived. The four <laughs> youngest came here. My mother was his firstborn, so she was always in in the kitchen with my grandpa. My grandpa was my best friend when I was little. My mom worked in restaurants for 55 years and she didn't trust other people to watch her children. So we were largely with her. Mm -hmm. uh, all of us learned how to cook. Yeah. I have one brother, one sister. I think because mom was one of 10, she stopped at three. Oh. <laughs> but, um, you know, and it just felt good to me. Mm -hmm. I like working in food, you know. Um, it's easy, you're always gonna have a gig. People yeah. will always be hungry, hungry, you know what I mean? Always. The rest of it was, you know, ice cream or whipped cream on the cake. I don't eat sweets, but, you know, extra cheese on the spaghetti was <laughs> the other stuff. But I like working in food. There's great job security. It's very humbling and empowering at the same time. I think everybody should have to work in food. I don't care yeah. what you do. It's a good experience. It's a humbling sure experience. Sure is. It teaches you a lot, and you mm, will never... Dish machine it. operator will teach you a whole lot. <laughs> you were a dish machine operator? Hell yes. Woo -woo. My first job. That's glamorous. It is. It's fun. I think it's, it would be fun. Oh, no, it's, it's not hot. fun, sweetheart. It's crazy. 120 degrees no. all day, and you're one big, sweaty, nasty piece of business. <laughs> and at 14 or 15, that ain't fun. It is not. No, that what, ain't a cute look. <laughs> no, what is your personal mission after all? After you've got the luck of the draw, you've got through here, you've come up with these different innovative ideas and cookware, cookware, cookbooks. What is your next Furniture, too, mission? yeah. Furniture? I, I love designing furniture. It's fun. I just, you know, to stay true to the brand. You can't be all things to all people. You have to decide what you are and who you are and work mm -hmm. with and surround yourself with people that are of like thinking, believe in whatever your mantra or motto is, mm -hmm. um, and then just be grateful. I like the feeling of working as hard as possible. Yeah. I like feeling that I put in a full day. Yeah. Whether it's a day off or mm -hmm. not, I have to be active, you know? Yeah. And as long as I'm true to that, I I'm, I'm good. That makes sense. Like, to stay stagnant, it's like, what am I? I think it's a Virgo thing. We're just like, we cannot. No, I can't do that. Here. I'm we real bad at it. Right, you have to keep moving. And my husband's a Leo, but he's like a cuspy kind of a thing. <laughs> We're, our birthdays are just a few days apart. And he's the same. He's, we suck at doing nothing. Like, it's really bad. Yeah. He has to be in his studio or I'm in the kitchen. And we have to be working mm -hmm. during the day. We're not good at just being just like, like, hey, let's sitting. like watch nine movies in a row. No. Although no. that does happen. Ozark, really. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is bad. If it's I mean, good. If it's I like watched the entire thing in 30 hours. I'm like, I, I uh, might have an issue. <laughs> binge watching Netflix and chill. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> um, now, what or is... Or Apple or Amazon. I've been known to do it on all of them. All of them. You know, it's dangerous. That is dangerous. It is. The on-demand TV is really is really devouring time. I know. I'm like, yes, now. Now, what is the most interesting thing we would learn from you without watching your movie, watching TV shows, books, or anything like that? What's the most interesting thing we could do? I don't know. I'm, I wait on people for a living. You can't ask somebody <laughs> that does what I do for a living, what's the coolest thing about you? 
Like, I don't know. Okay. I think that is pretty cool, everything you're doing thus far, though. It's pretty I awesome. mean, I like to jump out of airplanes. That is some... What? Okay. Love How it. many times have you jumped out of an airplane? Four or five. <sighs> what are, and what I've are been shut down a couple times, like, because of winds or whatever, but... Okay. Yeah, I love it. I mean, it organizes my brain in a strange way. It makes me very calm for a few months. I were love the, it. Were they all different heights or the same, like... No, the altitude? flight deck that we jumped from at the Sky Ranch is 14,500, so it's like three miles. It's fun. <laughs> it really is wildly relaxing, I swear. <laughs> Did anyone else hear three miles just out of the sky? It just <laughs> pew. You know what's so funny is I am petrified of being, like, on a ladder over, like, six feet. Like, short heights, I'm terrible like, at. No. Jumping out of an airplane, love it. You have Can't time get there to fast think. enough. Right. Oh, Love it. Nope. So fun. I wanted to go indoor skydive and just to be like, okay. That was harder. What? I just did that with friends. <laughs> My girlfriends and I were up in Montreal and we did mm -hmm. one of those tube things. Yeah. Because it looks like so fun. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I got this. Your face is just like. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> it was so much more fun jumping out of the real plane. Real airplane? <laughs> no. Mm -mm. I'm like, there's a ground. I might hit it and I'm just flat. But at least there's like air. It could slow down. Yeah, no, Someone once actually it. once you open the chute, it's so incredibly chill. You can totally yeah. stop your body if you push down with both hands at the same time. And you're just suspended above the earth. You're not dropping at all for several seconds. You're just like there and Zero it's in silent. It's so cool. It's very cool. Everyone. That tube thing, not so cool. It was just, <laughs> it just like loud. Like a bug or something, <laughs> an air dryer. It was no. really bad. <laughs> Is it hot air, cold air? Oh. No, it's just like regular air. Right, room temperature okay. air. But I don't know. <laughs> I sucked at it. I was just getting batted around all. I'm taking my mom. Like something got right sucked now. up in the vacuum cleaner. I felt like it was in a Dyson. <laughs> This is what the dust feels like. <laughs> no, it was out. not cool. It wasn't good. <laughs> no. I think I, I need a lot more practice time in those tubes. I did not do a, a respectable job. All the tricks. Have you mastered any tricks going airborne? I love doing tricks, but it's easy to do tricks when you jump out of planes because you can't go by yourself till after you go four times. So they do whatever you want. Okay. So my guy that I love to go with, he's been over 10,000 times. So he okay. would spin us and flip us and do all that, that kind of stuff. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh. That's what I love about it. I get to be like, you know, <laughs> Iron Man for a couple of seconds. I love Iron Man. I know. Me too. <laughs> I'm like, I need to do this. No, I so wish I had the ability to be an actress because I really want to do those action movies. Like, I want to shoot guns, kill people, like jump no off stuff. No stunt double, just straight up. No, I, that's the fun part. No, I would be afraid. I'm like, no, no not me. Don't that hit me. looks don't like do so it. much fun. Oh, I just want to get Flipping in there. Out cars. Fast and Furious, you're next. Too. Yeah, we, oh, no, not with the cars so much. No. More hand to hand. Okay. All right, Mission Impossible. It's there we weird. go. A lot of people think of them as nightmares, but I have dreams where I'm like in bar brawls and stuff, and I'm a badass. <laughs> that to me is super fun, and I wake up all excited. Like, <laughs> did you know what my dream was about last night? Do you write the? Do you write your dreams down? No, no, no. I do have notebooks everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everything that I do, whether it's a piece of furniture, a pot, a recipe, mm -hmm. every single thing I make in my home, I have over 20 years of notebooks. Mm -hmm. Every single cookbook, everything that I do, I, I write in notebooks. I do have a notebook next to my bed, but I don't write down dreams. I rarely even remember them. Um, I do write down recipes in the middle of the night, yeah. or if I come up with an idea for a different shape of pillow or a different type of uh, end table or something mm -hmm. or a different shape of pot we haven't done yet, I do keep the notebook there for that. Rachel Ray Library. That's nice. creepy, but... Uh, <laughs> How's that creepy? Uh, and they're all, like, um, just those regular composition Oh, books. okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. They're all cellar full. <laughs> Is there a food that you absolutely hate? Like, you talked about food that you love. You Not hate. Anything. Again, I think that if you're blessed enough not to be going hungry, I mean, I would literally eat anything, and I have. <clears throat> I have. Literally, probably eaten everything What's the craziest is. thing you've eaten? I mean, I've eaten everything. I've, I've eaten every organ in, in animals' bodies. I've eaten okay. bugs and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, things I don't really love. Okay. I don't like the 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 mouth feel of cooked salmon. Not, okay. not really my thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love smoked salmon and I, I every type of sashimi and sushi. But I don't love cooked salmon. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Eh. Uh, and I don't <laughs> like store bought mayonnaise because I didn't grow up with it. I make aioli and. Mm -hmm. I am obsessed with Fabinets, the eggless mayonnaise. Love the consistency of it. Use it all the time. It's fabulous. Um, but I just didn't grow up with it. So, you know, I'm not the one, first one in line at the, like, mayo bar <laughs> at the condiment station <laughs> just at like, wherever. Ready. But there's really nothing I wouldn't eat or try. Now, what is your favorite, absolute favorite food that you, like, could not Don't have one. <gasps> Seriously, don't. I mean, I love, you know... 
pasta. I mm -hmm. love uh, primarily Mediterranean food. But again, I'm not picky. Yeah. If I haven't had a really great scrambled egg or an omelet in a while, and I make an omelet that I'm like, oh, that's really good. That's the best thing I ever had. You know what I mean? I'm, right. I think a lot of people that cook for a living are like that. We're just not picky. We just like food. I love food. Now, there are preferences, though, like kale versus broccoli. Which one? They're both cruciferous vegetables. They're very, I, I like them both. I like, uh, I, I don't love a kale salad unless mm -hmm. it can set for a while and start to get it wilted and proper it, right. and have a good chew to it. Mm -hmm. um, but I like kale before kale was cool. My grandpa grew kale when I was this big, so... You know, I was the kid that nobody wanted to sit next to in kindergarten or first grade because my lunch stank. You know, like <laughs> sardine sandwiches with onions and, you know, Perfect. pickled kale or pickled garden vegetables and big old sardine sandwiches just, my lunch. Right. So what did you have? I was not an especially popular, super young kid. <laughs> just in the lunchroom opening up sardines. Can you want to trade? No. No. Like, no. <laughs> trade? Nobody didn't even sit at the so table, no. man. No. I like any food that makes your breath stink. I'm like, I love anchovies, olives, We have a onions. lot in common. They're just like, mm, yes, they, yes. They, they nurture the soul. Down with the anchovies. <laughs> All the ways. Um, okay, we have a speed round. Are you ready for the speed round? I, you'll be surprised at how bad I am at speed rounds. But, I mean, <laughs> no. I'm too wordy. I talk too much, and it's there's funny. always a but, but whatever, I'll try. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay, so I know that you like all foods, but you have to pick, okay? You have no, to I'm not gonna play your game. Yeah, no! no. <laughs> I'm not gonna play your game. No, Rachel, I have a friend, Melanie, uh -huh. see, here we go. Now it's a really long story. <laughs> go for it. Uh, Melanie's a famous photographer, and she does a series of books, um, the, the Last Meal or The Last Supper. It's all these chefs and what they eat. Yeah. And she asked me to do the first one. I said, oh, that makes me so creeped out. I don't wanna do it. I ended up in the, the sequel to that book. And the only way I could do it was to say the truth. If I knew it was my last meal, I wouldn't be worried about eating. Mm -hmm. I'd be doing some serious drugs <laughs> or drinking. I'd be really <laughs> bummed out, you know? That's true. But I would want my first meal, mm -hmm. if there was an afterlife in some form, to be with my grandfather and my first okay. dog. Okay. Boo loved butternut squash more than anything in the world. So it would be butternut squash okay. for Boo. And my grandpa and I love sardines and anchovies. So we'd have spaghetti with sardines or anchovies and a side of roast squash. And I'd be eating with the Runzo boys, my grandpa's best friends, and my grandpa and my first pit bull. That's who I'd be eating with. That's, what, that's as close as you're going to get. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate okay. it. <laughs> now, um, you cook a lot. Do you ever go out in the town? And if you do, what is one of your top favorite restaurants? I, I like to go out when we're taking friends out okay if, or um if i have friends visiting and they don't get to go out in new york mm -hmm. a lot um i like a lot of places you have to pick a category i love madame vo for um vietnamese food okay um i, I mean it depends I, I love via carota if i'm gonna have italian food that i didn't make myself mm -hmm. i love via carota um uh pizza we like speedy romeo and motorino and uh Mexican food like uh, uh, Toro Blanco, uh, Josh Capon's place. It depends on what it is. Yeah. If it's Chinese food, I like this um, Australian Chinese restaurant. Um, Hudo, what is the name of that? Chinese tuxedo. Yes, Chinese tuxedo. Love that place. Very sexy. <laughs> um, you know, it depends on the food. I have a place I like to go to for pretty much anything. Is, sure, I live in New York. Right? It's a big city. Yeah. Now, you have to answer this question. What would you do? Without EVOO. <laughs> I guess I'd use canola oil. I don't no. <laughs> I mean, what? I mean, if it didn't exist, I mean, mm -hmm. that's your choice, I guess. Uh, avocado oil. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I only use olive oil because that's, you know, my, my grandpa's an Italian American immigrant. And yeah. that's, that's the fat we cooked with. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm an oil hater, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, that's, that's what we always have in the pantry because mm -hmm. that's how I was raised. I can't imagine my life without EVOO. I'm like, I can't. No, I think it gives you a nice shiny coat. My mom always rubbed it on her feet, warm on her feet and mm -hmm. in her hair. So we, That's maybe too much hair. information, but no. you know, <laughs> we use it for everything. <laughs> oh well, thank you so much, Rachel. It that was, was a pleasure. Easy. That was it fun. It was. I'm not like. Grr. No, no. No, you're, scary. you're not scary at all. Yay! Woo -woo. So what we're going to do now is open the questioning up to the audience. There's a mic to my left and a mic to my right, if you would like to line up behind that. And go ahead and give Rachel Ooh, there's a such job. a rush. Right? <laughs> <laughs>
No, really, be my guest. Go for it. I answer anything. <laughs> have fun with it. I'm right near the mic, so I figured I should. Ooh, you have a it. nice voice. Right? Oh, thank you. Voice envy. <laughs> I'm a yoga teacher on the side, so. Oh, thank you. Um, lots, of um, lots of controlled breathing. Yes, exactly. Um, so you're very humble and talking about the beginning of your career, you, you just got lucky. Um, I'm actually curious to know, um, you know, obviously a lot of us in here, we work for Google, probably very goal oriented, had a, an idea in mind kind of before we got into this whole gig. And yeah. it sounds like you were very entrepreneurial right from the beginning. I am very know. entrepreneurial and I, yeah. I, I like the idea of being fearless. I think if you can close your eyes and see yourself trying something, that that's something you should then try. Mm -hmm. When I was a little kid, I started a basket company when Delicious Liaisons, uh, I mean, when Dangerous Liaisons was a movie. Uh -huh. I started a little basket company, <laughs> hand drew the whole catalog. Mm -hmm. It was called Delicious Liaisons. Oh. I only sold like 45 baskets. This was not a big industry. But I thought that would be fun. And I just liked the name in my head. Mm -hmm. So I did it. Like, I think that it's good to be fearless and that you do need to be able to picture yourself trying something. But my mom taught me a great lesson. I always re work harder than everybody else and be grateful for that job and you'll get opportunity. And of the opportunities that present themselves, if you can close your eyes and see yourself trying it, what's the worst thing that could happen? Mm -hmm. You go back to the thing you were already grateful for. That's why you have to start with gratitude and working harder. If you can work harder than anybody else and be grateful, mm -hmm. you can be literally fearless. It's like jumping out of an airplane because the only thing that can happen is you go back to what you were doing before. Yeah. So I truly believe that's the key to my life and going to bed feeling good and getting out of bed feeling good is that if the worst thing that can happen to you is what you were doing last month, last year, last week, then you can try anything. You'd be a great yoga teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm too loud. <laughs> a friend of mine has a yoga studio and she's really cool and I'm always so scared to go there because I don't want to embarrass her. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the person <laughs> like, that goes, ha! You know, or like somebody middle. falls over and I accidentally <laughs> laugh or, I pass like some gross gas or like weird burp or something. That is me in the yoga studio. I always picture myself like that is something I'm really phobic about. I really want to try yoga. I was a cheerleader. I'm very bendy, stretchy. I think okay. I could be good at it, mm -hmm. but I'm petrified to like, go because no. I think I'm too loud. <laughs> I am loud in yoga. I'm also scared to go to really, really fine restaurants. Okay. Like when you get up the Michelin star scale, <sighs> petrified. Yep. Because mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm not in that club. Right. You know, like. Somehow I start to sweat when I walk through the door. Like, am I doing like they're right? gonna come for me mid meal and say, "Excuse me, Miss Ray, but you're really just not our client here." <laughs> am I using the it's right the truth? Board? Like, what is going? On? It's the truth. Like every yeah. once in a while, I get invited to those types of places, mm -hmm. and I'm always petrified. I'm like, no, and I'm not hungry because I'm so nervous. I don't want to eat anything. <laughs> so then it looks like I'm rude and inappropriate. Oh, <laughs> you gotta get a side salad, something. Just like I know. one time. <laughs> I know. I need therapy if one only had the time. <laughs> Um, any other questions? Next question. Hey, go for it. Hi, Rachel. Uh, shameless plug. I was on your show twice. Woohoo! Did you have fun? I had an amazing time. The first time I asked Mario Lopez on a date, he chickened out. Nice. And the second time <laughs> His I did loss. You're <laughs> stunning. <laughs> Thank you. And then the second time I did the potluck, I don't know if you remember that show. It's like a potluck. Bring oh, everybody brought dishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Literally, I, a potluck. I, the, uh, I think I did the Italian skewers. Nice! And that was way before I decided to be vegan. I decided to be crazy. Hey, man, yeah. I am very into the vegan. I, I have broken down every <laughs> wall. I used to be like, oh, man, can't we all just get along? <laughs> Live in moderation. I have studied so much uh, in, you know, trying to educate myself about mm -hmm. vegan, vegetarian. Uh, I, I, and I'm down with it now. I really am. Well, that's my question. I was going to ask you, what's your favorite vegan dish? You know, <laughs> it, it depends. I write a lot of them for some of our guests that are, of course, vegan. This time of year, my lentil and beet soup is, you got to go and download this immediately. Mm -hmm. I wrote it for um, Alan. Alan comes, was on okay. the show, and I love him so much. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with that soup. It's so easy to make, and it's the perfect time of year. Beets are so cheap and cheerful right now and just delicious. Um, and uh, do you eat pasta? Do you, do you, yeah. Are you down with pasta? So I make a pasta that's cooked in red wine with roasted beets and beet greens. You want to get into anybody's anything, make that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just don't make it for people you don't really, really like, because right. they will come back. <laughs> and, you know, that's that. Um, I also love my favorite restaurant that's vegan, vegetarian, is Nick's. Have you been to Nick's? I haven't been. <gasps> I'm going to change your world. <laughs> so Nick's is in my neighborhood. My husband, his favorite word other than scotch is pork. My <laughs> husband loves this restaurant and would go there once a week, no problem. Mm -hmm. Nick's is the name of the Supreme Court case in America that allowed uh, produce people to classify tomatoes, which are fruits, mm -hmm. as vegetables because they thought it was better PR. That's insane. Oh. It's Nick's versus whatever is the name of the case. Mm -hmm. So Nick's, N-I-X is the name of the restaurant. It's all vegan vegetarian and it is amazing. They make duck buns that aren't duck, they're cauliflower. Mm -hmm. They make braised pork shoulder that's a cabbage that tastes like smoky and crazy. It is the find of the century. They make little shiitake mushroom uh, tacos. They have insane tandoor bread with all sorts of dips and spreads. Go to Nick's immediately. And they have one of the best cocktail programs in New York City. You will have the best, again, only take people you like there because you'll have to return with them. Rachel, instead of Mario, will you be my date? Absolutely. <laughs> I live in the hood. Easy. <laughs> Done. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Me about being page six. Rachel had a lesbian date. <laughs> she was so hot for this girl. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would love to be in somebody's cool gossip column. Right. You know, like, not the, like, lame, you know, I cook better than her. I don't like her for, like, I want to be in something it's cool. Something juicy. Like, right, yeah, right, I'm in right. there. <laughs> um, I had a question. I'm a big fan of your show. And given Thank you. And other projects you work on, it sounds like there's so many amazing aspects of your job. So I was curious what your favorite part of your job is. And you're such a positive person. I don't know if you'll be able to answer this, but if you have a least favorite part of your job. Um, red carpet anything? Is favorite or least? least. Oh. <laughs> Anytime I have to be on a carpet with, surrounded by what I think are real celebrities, I just, I am sick to my stomach. I hate super high heels. When I went to, I love Michelle and Barack Obama. I got to work with them for the entirety of their administration. I miss them. I considered them actual friends, which is mind blowing to me. But the, Probably the most embarrassing night of my life was going to their last state dinner, which was for the prime minister of Italy and his beautiful wife. Walking into the White House, first of all, I chose a dress that was very autumnal because it was late October. A mm -hmm. uh, freaky summer-like 90 plus day. <laughs> and I'm in a dress that's a black turtleneck up to here. <laughs> so a river ran through it. I'm pouring sweat the whole night. <laughs> And walking up the steps, I'm not even in the White House yet, I stick my giant high heel through the inside lining of my dress and rip the entire thing out. No. And tie the tool around my foot so much so, I, I, by the way, I'm getting chills while I'm telling you this, the woman at the desk that's checking in, everybody, everybody, prime ministers, presidents, mm -hmm. movie stars, she has to leave her post to go find scissors to cut my foot out of the inside lining. This is before I've even walked the carpet to oh. have the picture. Yeah, <laughs> worst, worst, worst. Then I get inside and I find out we're at the head table. No stress there. <laughs> it was like, I can't, I'm hivey just talking about it. It's so hard to me. <laughs> the thing that makes me feel most comfortable um, is being in our studio. Cause I know that whether it's somebody new who's been there or somebody that's never been there, that that's our house and we play by our rules and everybody's gonna feel comfortable. And I feel like I'm in a really safe place. I love being at, at our job. My most favorite thing that I do in my entire year mm -hmm. is Feedback, which is a show I put together 10, uh, now 11 years ago at South by Southwest. My husband is a lawyer by day, but he has a rock band. He got into Berkeley School of Music, but his parents wanted him to be a lawyer. So he wussed out and didn't just pay for his own schooling like the rest of the world. And, <laughs> but he saved me a fortune over the years because he became an entertainment lawyer. So that came in quite handy. Right. <laughs> um, but we are both really into music. We have uh, about 2,500 vinyl records. The most expensive thing in our apartment is our floating record player. Mm -hmm. And we have this combination of my food, um, sponsored cocktails, no overcrowding, three stages, 
uh, 20 or so bands during a day long rock concert that we call Feedback. And it is the most fun I have all year long. It's, it's during the South by Southwest Music Festival in Austin and that is my Christmas. Um, and we're, we're doing interesting things with that. I have to leave it at that, but we're doing some interesting things with that. One follow-up question, as a fellow record player owner, what is your favorite record? Um, Hunky Dory, David Bowie, is probably my favorite single artist. We have an enormous Beatles collection. The one that's most special to both my husband and myself is our Sgt. Peppers that's signed by Ringo. <laughs> I, again, I almost burst into tears. He <laughs> did it the day he was on our show, mm -hmm. and he doesn't sign anything, you know. And my husband was telling him that his first word was more, because he had the Sgt. Pepper's mono playing on the, his, little, his little toddler record player, mm -hmm. and his mom wanted him to come to table and sit in his high chair and eat dinner with the family, and she took the record off, and he got so mad, he screamed more, and that's his first word, and he ripped the cover. And Ringo made fun of him and said, you know, I could have brought, brought you a fresh one of this, uh -huh. and he signed it for him. But the idea that it's John's first word, that I ever got to meet a Beatle, I mean, it makes me want to burst into tears. Yeah. My first word was vino, no big surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my grandpa made wine, and he used to babysit me, and I was little because my mom was in the restaurant. And I hated formula. My mom raised me on formula. So he used to put water and a little of his homemade wine in my bottle, and he'd hold the bottle up and go, vino, vino. <laughs> And I would drink that, <laughs> and then my cheeks would get rosy and I'd go to sleep. So I was Perfect. then a good baby, right? But he would hold up my bottle, and I thought that's how, that's how you said Baba was Vino. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> There's a picture of me in one of those um, stick the high chair on the edge of the table. They stopped selling them because they killed so many people. But oh. I'm in one of those hook-on high chairs, and it's an old Polaroid, and on the back it says Rachel's first word, Vino. And it's me holding my hand up for my baba, but it looks like I'm a drunk at a bar. It's so <laughs> funny. So my husband, more mine, vino, more vino. That's why we got married in Tuscany in a vineyard. <laughs> that makes so much sense. Oh, my God. Anyway, I that was a great blow. question. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for coming in today. A really cool way to start the week. Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm hosting my first ever Thanksgiving this year for around like 25 people. And I was wondering if you had advice on like... I have lots. <laughs> oh, great. I was onto the side dish that you would recommend and any general advice would be awesome. For the turkeys themselves, you're doing the whole thing? I'm outsourcing the turkey to my parents, but I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> See, now I wouldn't do that. The turkey's the easiest, but let me tell you my, my top turkey tips in case you're brave enough to do the actual birds next time. It's a funny term, it's an old English term. It's spatchcocking is when you take the backbone out of any, any poultry and make it flat. And I never make one big bird. It's impossible to successfully cook one large bird. And you should do a pound per person, so that'd be a 25 pound bird. That's mm -hmm. a big bird. Yeah. So we spatchcock the birds for even cooking so the white meat and the dark meat cook at the exact same time. And always, no matter how many people I'm cooking for, I do birds that are 12 to 14 pounds and then multiples of them. So you do two birds is what I would recommend for you guys, flattened on a rack. It cuts your cooking time down to a third. It cooks perfectly and evenly and you can platter one on a giant cutting board and carve the other one completely before you even sit down. Mm -hmm. So there's one you can decorate and stays pretty, you know, till everybody's seated at least. Side dishes, we have millions on the, the website and, of course, on the show site. Um, we have literally over a decade of them. But I think, generally speaking, roast vegetables are very simple for people. Um, cauliflower, whole heads of cauliflower are very showy and very simple to master. We have tons of recipes for them. They look like giant brains and you could do like three giant whole roast cauliflowers and you cut them like cake and it looks really fancy. You could pour Welsh rarebit sauce over them or lots of ricotta and parmigiano and garlic all over them and it just looks cool. Roast vegetables are your easiest bet. Um, mashed potatoes hold all day in a bain marie and you can make those interesting by doing a third of the weight in parsnip, which is like a carrot with an attitude. Parsnip and potato together and then mixing in a surprising flavor, boursin soft cheese with garlic and herb, or super sharp cheddar and nutmeg and a little cayenne pepper. Um, that's always a big hit. People love the mashed potatoes. Um, I rarely make gravy out of the pan stock. I'll add a little bit, but I always make gallons of gravy. And I do that with store-bought 
turkey stock. And I, the way I deepen the flavor of my gravy and the color is with Worcestershire sauce rather than that gravy liquid stuff. Um, on and on and on. Baked pastas are always popular with people. Pumpkin soup is such an easy starter. Deviled eggs, people love. Yes. I always do stuffed eggs to start the, the course. Everybody loves them. Um, and they're so easy. But uh, honestly, I got you covered on this. Go to our websites and just put in <laughs> Thanksgiving sides. You'll be able to download a ream, like 500 recipes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And maybe I'll give the turkey a try. Okay, good. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Thanks again for being here. Um, I Thanks for a, having me. I have a bit of a silly question, um, but I'm really curious. I'm a silly person, so that's <laughs> great. So when Beyonce's Lemonade came out, there were some... Oh, I was in Bad News <laughs> once, right? <laughs> the most preposterous thing in the world that I even know Jay-Z is, like, right. ridiculous. <laughs> oh, no. But uh, anyway, I, I barely had an awareness of it until I went to work the next day and all of the young people that work for me told me about it, but I just thought it was hilarious and I was kind of thrilled. <gasps> I sent Rachel Roy some flowers and apologized to her, though. Does <laughs> so so everybody know what I'm referring to? Maybe you want to tell them what happened? Uh, no, you could go right ahead. <laughs> Somehow it was rumored that Rachel Roy, the super tall, gorgeous fashion designer lady, got mixed up with me, Rachel Ray, and that they were rumored to have been having a fling, Jay-Z and her, not me. <laughs> so somehow I got into this and all these people were zapping me with their stingers or something, all hating on me. And I'm like, I think that's really flattering that anybody even thinks I'm, that anybody even thinks that I'm in that room. I'm home in my King Kong slippers making John's spaghetti. The idea that I could even be in the room with those people, it's like, come on, please. <laughs> Which leads me to the second half of my question is how much are you aware of like- Not at all, zero, zippo, zilcho. <laughs> but thank you for reminding me that one time I was by accident, accident. cool. <laughs> cool enough to be gossiped about. <laughs> yeah, I was cool enough to be in the room once by mistake. <laughs> That's perfect. That was funny. Hi, hello. So over the past like 10 or 15 years, we've seen people care more about local food and organic food and Absolutely. natural stuff. So what other trends do you see going into the future or something, new things people are trying? Uh, well, I think it goes back to that awareness thing, just that everybody's having the conversation about it. Yeah. What I hope people do is take it to the local government and grassroots level. Unfortunately, a lot of the work that I put in over the last eight years lobbying literally physically in person in Washington and improving the quality of school food has just been ripped out. Although Mayor de Blasio in New York City, I'm so proud to say as of last Thursday, no more food shaming in the city of New York. Every child now has equal access to school lunch in New York, which is wow. amazing and that's a huge thing. But I would love people to not only, I, I agree, it's a very, very, very big deal. But I would love to see people take what they like about food or what they've learned about it and share with younger people and people in their community and care about the quality of food of their neighbors, not just themselves. I think that everybody now has the knowledge to do that. And when you see natural disasters, understand that there is always a disaster, whether you live in a small town or a big city. There's a food bank everywhere, everywhere that you should be giving of your time and your money or both or food to those around you and educating each other, talking to each other about it because we have to build that network. I don't even have human children, I have a pit bull. But I care about the quality of school food and access to food because I care about healthcare costs, because I care about the ability of children to learn because they're going to grow up and become the next generation of everything for us. I need them to be healthy and smart. So I'm hoping that what comes out of everybody getting more social and sharing with each other and coming up with all these alternatives for no matter what type of lifestyle you want to live, that they also take the time to share that with each other and be mindful of giving back to their community. I think the, the last hurdle for young people is because of social media, everybody's also very tunnel vision. We don't socialize in person as much as we should. We don't spend as much time in the community as we should. I think that we need to be mindful of that not to be so closed in and only communicating with each other like this, to go out and spend time with, with actual people 
and share with them, I think is important. What I'd like people to do with food and anything else that they have to offer is to be more community minded. Thank you. Any more questions? Well, that was serious. <laughs> <laughs> do we have any other questions? All right, well, we can all just do the staring contest. We can. What? We're actually on time. Oh, we're on time. Whoa, Yay! Whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah! So thank you so much, Rachel. Let's give thank a chance for Rachel. Thank you, guys. <laughs> that was fun for you. It was. That was so much Certainly fun, fun for me. <laughs> oh, today is my mother-in-law's birthday. That's rough, of course, to have your birthday on um, a very somber yeah. um, occasion. But it's uh, our family business tonight to go out and make her feel special for a okay. few hours. So... I'm going to go do it exactly what she'd want me to do and have a glass of wine before dinner and get myself in the mood. <laughs> thanks, everybody. I really appreciate being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Asia. Oh, thank you, Rachel. You're such a cutie pie.